Your hair is perfect. I'm, I'm more worried about my hair, to be frank with you. <laughs> okay, they should be able to see us uh, any second now. If, uh, if we're not on Facebook, somebody has to tell me. Um, so that uh, we'll know. Let's have a look. Perfect. And see, do we see ourselves? Yes! And we're we on. We are on the air. Okay, great. So I'll just get rid of this now. And I'll return. Okay, so uh, Maria, Tangela, how was that? Hello. <laughs> uh, so um, we begin the show with our jingle. Are you ready for the jingle? I am absolutely ready. Okay, it's very similar. Every day it seems the same. And here it is coming now. Oh, sweep you up with feet, with food, with good sugar milk. Keeps your legs rest a while, all you gotta do is smile. We're swell, can't you tell you got now? But when the show begins, you better hold on it tight. For before you know it, you'll be high as a kite. Take a break, settle down, we're the only show in town. It's our own ocean, no, you got now. Give it up, don't think twice, we're a hurricane on ice. What the hell, give it yell, ring a bell, show and tell. Mademoiselle, give a smile, you got mail. You got mail. <laughs> I want to know what year this was first written and performed, Mel. When was this fir first written and performed? Yes. Uh, are you interviewing me today? <laughs> I thought I thought to reverse psychology <laughs> for uh, for uh, for no, for I, a second. I, I have too much experience. I'm uh, I'm schooled in this. I'm trying though, because of my limited uh, abilities here. Um, can I, ah stop share? Okay, here we are. Okay, so um, it's great to have you on the show, and I'm going to be very careful so that you're not interviewing me today. <laughs> Maybe you can tell me uh, just right at the end um, as, as a sneak peek. Sneak peek of what? Uh, into, into the history of, uh, of this song. If you remember at the end of the show. Perfect. So, so uh, Maria, we always begin our interviews. You're the 10th uh, wonderful person on our show. Thank you. In its new edition. You're the first woman. Uh, you're sticking up for women everywhere, but you're a very special and remarkable woman. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And why am I thinking that? Because you're high tech and your movies and you're brilliant and you're young and you've won all these awards in the past two years. But when I met you, you were a movie maker. But before that, we always start off the show with what is your favorite Beatles song? I think my favorite Beatles song has to be Yesterday because it was probably when I was about 17 that I learned the lyrics. Um, I had a teacher who was trying to get me into canto or into piano or into, into uh, one of the two. And she said, um, do you think that there is a song which you can uh, that feels comfortable for your voice. So I learned the lyrics of yesterday and probably it's the only song that I know the full lyrics of. And anytime I feel like humming something, it's yesterday. So um, I love Beatles altogether. Like I was listening, I, I was listening to their albums like full on, uh, even just like a couple of years ago, I, I get into these uh, modes where it's just kind of all about the Beatles. But um, I would go for yesterday as my favorite one. Okay, so um, because I know that you sing, I'm going to ask you to uh, sing a few bars. So I just have to say that the teacher did not convince me to go into canto, but I will do it just for, for the sake of entertainment. Okay. Why she had to go, I don't know, she wouldn't say. 
I said something wrong now I long for yesterday yesterday and we're done <laughs> you should have gone into canto well then film and cinema took over my life and the music had to just be a consumer rather than uh, so, so pe pe people can tell from your uh, from your voice uh, and a little bit from your accent uh, and your name, that you're not British born. I am not British born indeed. And if you would ask any of our Finnish friends, they would say I'm Finnish, but I am not Finnish either. Um, I am now, I am actually now on a journey of discovering all my ancestors um, and, and seeing if, if there is something in, in Finland um, uh, kind of part of my heritage. I'm, um, I'm born in Romania and I have moved to the UK about 11 years ago. So turning 33 next month, uh, it's, yes. Ha and happy birthday to you. Thank you so much. It's, uh, yeah, it's just about, not exactly um, half of my life, but yeah, over, over a third I've been spending in the UK and two thirds in Romania. You're, the, you're just at the beginning of your life though. I, yeah, I think so. So how did you come to the UK so early in your life? It was uh, to do my MA, which was in filmmaking. My first degree was in sociology. And then I had a second degree in acting. Um, and it's during acting that I discovered kind of my, um, my true vocation, which was as a film director, film producer. Um, and then I got into film schools for my MA in the UK. And I have since established here. Okay, and um, so that's very uh, good that you figured out what you want to do at a young age, relatively young age. That's true. Uh, what's your favorite uh, movie? <laughs> so my favorite movie um, can get people frightened when I tell them it's Stalker. <laughs> but in fact, I learned that in Russian, um, you pronounce it Stalker, which doesn't mean the stalker, but it means the guide. And it's a film by a Russian director called Andrei Tarkovsky, uh, which is one of the fathers of cinema. Uh, it really left a, a huge print in my life. And um, to this day, it's my favorite film. That's for sure. And how, how many films have you made? So it's interesting because as a, as a professional in the film industry, or film and TV, uh, you really kind of end up getting involved in a lot of jobs. So there are jobs that um, kind of pay the bills, jobs that um, are your passion projects. Those can take years to get off the ground as a producer. So you are like falling in love with the script and then you are really kind of working really hard to finance it and to um, get the best team and actors for it. Um, and then you take it all the way down to distribution. It's almost like a like a startup, right? It's like you 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 have an idea, you make the product, and then you sell it. You find your route to to market. Uh, so uh, that, that's why the the two worlds are very very similar. And I've I've made this parallel right um, right like um, early on, so to say, in my career. So. I have worked on many productions where I was hired as a line producer, for example, um, and I was doing like a, anything from three weeks to three, four months um, um, at a time. But then my, my projects were, I would say, under, under, under 10 um, that I have taken off the ground and then taken all the way down to distribution. Okay, so you're, uh, you'd be welcome to put under here on your feet afterwards uh one of your, your favorite the films that you produced. Thank you. Well, yeah. actually the latest one, it, it, it is a short film, but it is a, a short film that is very, very dear to me. It's called Gold Star. And um, it's by, um, by a very, very dear friend of mine, the writer director who, is, uh, who, who, who grew up in, in, in a Jewish uh, family and education system. So he wrote, he wrote that and we produced it. Um, I produced it and um, it is it is very, very dear to my heart and it's kind of the, the latest project. It Synopsis was, in one sentence. Um, 
after having a, a one night stand, um, an 18 year old uh, a Jewish girl is uh, trying to find solutions for something that changed her life completely. And, and she is looking at, um, at tradition and religion as a, a way to find, um, to find her, 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 yeah, her way in life. But this is fantasy, right? Because um, 18 year old Jew Jewish girls don't have one night stands. So that's why she basically that's the exception to the rule, so to say, ah. like one of those accidents that leads to to a completely like a, a major change in her life. And how do you treat uh, basically how do you balance the um, the uh, the modern ways of doing things and kind of the um, the group, the entourage, the uh, the desire to uh, to be progressive and to take uh, to take decisions uh, into your own hands from very early on, combined with tradition, values, and what you really kind of what you really want as as a person shaping up. So I I, I think she, uh, my 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 director right there he did a very very good job in um, in delicately uh, touching upon so many so many subjects, but without ever placing a judgment and very candidly uh, took this on. Um, and I, I actually it was, um, it screened uh, in the Jewish Film Festival and uh, it, it, it got like a big, big support from the community. Um, it was in the Jewish Chronicle as well in the newspaper um, here in the UK. So yeah, it's a very dear film for me. And you were the producer. And I produced it from the beginning to an end. It was quite of a journey with it. Raised money. Yes. Hired yeah. the director and the actors. Yes, exactly, exactly. Sometimes, I mean, I, I combine, I, I did documentaries, like feature length, feature length films, narrative, but um, it is just as much work for a short film uh, than it is for a, uh, like a full two hour film that you play in cinemas. It's, it's, it's exactly the same type of work. It's only that you get to shoot less and you need less money, but the whole, the whole process goes through exactly the same steps. Is this one of the things that um, provoked you to start your startup? I would say definitely the desire to improve processes was was at the core of of, of our uh, of our kind of mission, so to say. Uh, okay, so so um, now is a good time to explain what you guys are doing because um, your startup has won multiple national and international awards you're not even 33 years old what's going on <laughs> what happened well and, 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 you, and, you, and you're such a nice person well i don't know i think they they just uh, thought that they should give some awards to women <laughs> um for a change oh um, well, they, they picked the right woman well thank you thank you so much it's it's um it's been quite of a journey so i have a co-founder who is uh who's my better half she she's the she's the um, the economist the mathematician the entrepreneur i was a film person so having the expertise and we know each other since we were five from bucharest romania more than anything we're very good friends and our families are friends um so we knew that no matter what um if anything happens mom will call and will say like uh, like like two sisters you know just kiss and make up <laughs> so i think that's a very very good start for for a friend for like a friendship and also for for a, a journey an entrepreneurial journey um so she's my co-founder irina she at the moment lives in new york so she's in between london and new york and we basically joined forces because we thought um, the film industry is so rich and and in in in, in everything in um, in the way content is made in the way content is distributed. So many people are are watching on all sorts of devices, be it phones, tablets, TV, new ways of watching TV. So there's no more cable, but you you have all of the subscriptions, and um, and of course cinemas. And in the back end, so it's what happens behind the scenes, all of the processes are very slow, very opaque, hierarchical, and, um, and they are lacking innovation. So we said, okay, how we can 
bring innovation not only on what you see on screen, like super special effects and 3D and all of that, but also what happens with, in our instance, how the crew, the director, the producers, the investors, the sales agents are getting paid. Um, a, a minor, minor detail in, in the lives of people, money. <laughs> um, what people like me are going to ask you is, okay, I am working on a movie. Um, there's something called Excel. Yes. I, don't, I don't use it, but I've heard that other people do. And you make a, a spreadsheet like everybody else, no? Exactly. So that's, um, we felt that like the, there's a lot of um, he heavy <laughs> um, pressure on, on the shoulders of poor Excel. Uh, it's almost like a Sisyphus that is, has to push the entire financial system uh, up, up the mountain. And we, we thought it's time for something uh, slightly more modern to be used. Um, what, what is incredible is that no matter how big or how small uh, the companies are using Excel spreadsheets, where there's not only a lot of manual work, but there's um, a lot of uh, kind of space for human error. Um, the integrity of data is generally corrupted. Uh, it's simply said, uh, people either mistype, right? So instead of writing a thousand, you're writing a hundred thousand. You're it's 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 just one zero. That's that's the only difference, right? Or um, you forget to write something, or you lose a piece of evidence. And we have seen Excel spreadsheets for companies that were, were dealing with uh, many titles, so what you would call a, a catalog. And when we were looking uh, into those spreadsheets, there was just so much information missing, as in there were cells that were empty. And then we were going back to them and saying, well, it's very hard to, to basically draw a conclusion because you're missing this, this, and this. And how can we get that information? And they were saying, well, that person left the company. so." we don't know what is supposed to be in, in that cell, for example. And, and if I'm very, very creative, I can have one Excel and send you another one. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So the transparency and the accountability is, is, is very, very hard to trace. And um, moreover, you have all of these companies that all, each of their own has uh, their uh, ways of doing it or templates or processes and you just end up with on one film alone on you end up with 50 Excel spreadsheets um, and there's no consensus whatsoever and everyone kind of keeps it their own uh, the, their own ways of, of keeping accountability and that delays payments it's it's full of errors and uh, no one has visibility of, over over the data. And, and we were just kind of simply saying, well, how, how, how would investors invest in this? Like, why would you invest in something that you cannot control, that you have no transparency over, that pays in like a year and a half in the best case scenario? And um, why would they do this? It makes no sense. And there, I mean, the, the answers are multiple. <laughs> um, I guess some people do it because out of passion, they want to support films and, and, and you know, they basically put the money into, into that um, for just to support the industry or to support the project. Other people are more thorough. So they send an auditor, they pay audits and they go like, no, 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 we want to see every receipt. We want to verify everything. Um, but uh, overall, the industry is definitely lacking in transparency and efficiency. So, so you set up a transparent mechanism. So our business is paying everyone in the, in the film and TV business, um, be it actors, producer, director, cast, um, uh, investors, sales agents, and is paying everyone in a transparent and efficient manner. Uh, cutting down payment times to days, something that would normally last years, with no thresholds. So people are withdrawing on our platform ten dollars uh, because they really want to pay for that beer <laughs> over dinner, um, and um, full transparency over over the the money the money money chain. Is, and that's why it, we call them chain. 
Yeah, but it, is it really blockchain or it's analogous? It's a little bit like it's because, you know, people like me wonder. Good there question. Are so, there are so few applications of the real blockchain. Correct. And that's why, uh, thank you very much for this. This is a very good question because uh, it's still a lot of education we need to do uh, on how we use blockchain. First, it's, it's important to say we're using the blockchain technology and not the cryptocurrency. So everyone gets paid in dollars, pounds, euros, and they do not see Bitcoin or Ethereum. We have no integration with Ethereum. So someone, if someone wants, would even want to pay in Ethereum, we can't make those payments. Good. What we are using is the technology that makes these payments, what's called smart contracts. That's what Ethereum uses, smart contracts. So it means that we encode the entire um, algorithm of how much everyone needs to be paid. And the smart contract is immutable. It cannot be changed. Once you create it, you cannot make amendments to it. Um, and it executes it automatically. So you have automation, transparency, and the immutable aspect all insured by the blockchain. Because we my, my, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, because we say, don't trust us. Go and verify it yourself. So, so if, if I'm investing in a, in, a, in a film, actually, I give you the money to manage. The money goes into some bank account that uh, the film chain is responsible for somehow. That's a very good question. At the moment, we are not dealing with production money. It is very tempting. And we are very aware of this possibility out there. Um, but overall, we allow producers to raise their finance and so to collect the money from the investors, make the film, and then it's only money coming in from the exploitation. So from cinemas, from uh, okay. TV, from DVDs. So you're the, you're the bank of disbursement. Absolutely. That's exactly right. Um, I, I might write that down because I like the way it sounds. Okay. Um, so, so, um, okay, so it, it, but if I'm a businessman, why should I want to relinquish my secret to the ledgers and spreadsheets and, and deciding that 5% of the profits is what I decide is 5% of the profits? It's true. There are a lot of bad players, right? And they might not want to, to yeah, to have transparency. I mean, you, well, you're you're, you're a, a cop. I am a cop. Yeah, and I put my hat on, and I I take things very seriously. So how, how many how many people are using film chain? So so far we have thirty five projects. So thirty five productions, um, which is very exciting. It's and exciting. Yeah, we, we have a, a really, really great production um, that involves part of executive, so it's an executive producer, sales agents, Cinefil, one of the biggest companies in Israel. Um, we have films financed by HBO, films financed by uh, the Council of Europe, by Screen Australia. We have five of those. Um, so generally, it's the financiers and the producers who really want to use us. Yes, so, and you yeah, take a, you take you take a cut of the money that you're disbursing. We do. We do take a, a very kind of a, the small fee for the amount of work that we're doing, so to say, because uh, what we really believe in is how automation can can further save on 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 people's money. Maria, you, you shouldn't be uh, you shouldn't be embarrassed to say that you're taking a cut. No, it's no, we're definitely not embarrassed. Um, as, lo as long as it's not any more than 35%. Yeah. It's more. Hmm. Well, now that you mentioned 35. Uh, and and you, you also raised the government money. Yes. So basically what, what, what we do is, 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 is aligning all the stakeholders' interests and basically acting as this third-party unbiased entity. So it is very difficult for the bad players, so to say, who want to kind of hide things um, to, to justify why they wouldn't use us. Because in the moment you have like 100 stakeholders and 85 of them really want this because they want this transparency and they say, well, I'm not making these payments. I'm not investing in this if we're not having a third party unbiased 
platform to deal with the disbursements, um, it, it kind of buys in the adoption from everyone else. And for example, the Council of Europe, they will not invest on projects with, with over a certain budget if there's no third party collection service, because they say, yeah, we, we're, we're the Council of Europe, where we need to regulate all of this and to make sure that this is um, um, like a cultural vehicle, but also a money, many, money making entity, right? So um, more and more investors and even producers are saying, we don't go into complex co-productions if we don't have one entity that is unbiased. So uh, we applied for a governmental grants, which was not for the creative industry, but for um, research and development. So it was like heavily uh, R&D was uh, sponsoring cutting edge technology such as blockchain. And um, it was super exciting because we, we partnered with Imperial College London and they were our academic partners. We have two of their amazing professors and we have their students who are building alongside our internal team and they can experiment with so many things. It's like super exciting. We just kind of give them a project and we let them roll with it. Um, of course, they get support from our team, but they manage to, to, to do their own kind of, um, well, dissertations <laughs> on, 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 on film chain. And, um, and it's, it's so nice to just experiment with technology and see where that takes us. Well, first of all, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Um, and and um, I have a bunch of questions. For example, because you did this because you love film. Correct. But if you were, for example, were the mayor of a city, you could do very much similar things with your finances if you wanted to. Um, tell me, tell me about that application. <laughs> no, I, I, did you ever sit back uh, with uh, Irina as your partner? Yes. And say, this, this, we're onto something here. You know, we are, we are doing kosher disbursements of complicated financial issues. But there's a lot of uh, organizations that need your touch, universities, yeah, colleges. You know, imagine if there was a, a a film chain for universities. A lot of people donate money to universities, hundreds of millions of dollars, and they have no idea whether the use of the money is kosher or not. Yep. So I can I can see you doing wonderful things, and that brings me to my next question, which is where is the Maria I met? a few years ago, the filmmaker. I, I think that's a very good point, Mel. So it is very tempting to sp spread ourselves into, into new markets and even do like market research in order to better understand the dynamic of a completely new industry. For example, constructions and publishing. Um, those were two industries publishing, you know, we were talking about it. Um, a, a professor from University of Toronto, uh, wink, wink, Canada. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, he was saying- on, wait, wait a second, I'll go get my, my flags. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, just like you, he was, uh, he, he's an author of books and he was saying, well, I completely understand what you're doing in film because I'm an author of these books and uh, they're sold around the world, but it takes so long in order for me to understand what the publishers are taking and to collect the money and to get paid and to follow the money trail, essentially. Um, uh, can you please do this in film, in, uh, in, in uh, publishing so that I can actually get paid uh, what I'm owed? So that for us was like, ooh, how tempting. Um, and it's still on our roadmap. And, okay, uh, but publishers are not going to want to do this uh, because the money is internal. Uh, what, your big advantage here is that you have investors and people buying into the movie. Correct. That can put but, a bit of pressure. Yeah, but you know, it, it could be a different kind of a publishing when it's not a publishing house that mm -hmm. we know of. But imagine if there were a publishing house that there were investors investing the money. Exactly. Exactly. So you have to find out the right incentive mechanisms and um, yeah, perhaps, per perhaps do some behavioral changes. So, for example, to say to the publishing house, okay, you're not going to put all the money up front. 
Um, so you'll have contributors who will contribute to uh, uh, to basically green lighting this book. Um, however, what you need to do is you need to be a bit more transparent about what's happening with the money from the exploitation. Right. So it's a bit of a give and take there. Uh, you have to find the right incentives for them to use this. Um, and also, it's much cheaper to publish a book than to make a movie. Correct. Correct. It, so it, it def uh, definitely um, it's a bit different with commissioning an author and and paying for their expenses and whatnot to uh, getting a whole production off the ground. So that's that is definitely a different scale. Okay, but, I, want, I want to. Oh, sorry. Yeah, what what I wanted to say is like uh, coming back to your question about um, the where where the filmmaker is. Well, it's still here, and that's why I think that's why we're so much focusing on on this industry because we feel like we know it really well. We don't want to spread ourselves too thin. We want to keep focused, and this is the industry that's which which language I can I can speak with my eyes closed. I can I can speak this language. Uh, in French, if needed, uh, not only English and Romanian. So um, it, it, it's kind of my, my second nature. I'm going completely into a new market just for the sake of trying things out. I, I, I think can be quite dangerous for a, for a young startup. Yeah. So um, let's uh, let's um, fast forward a couple of years ahead, mm. and you're and you're no longer 33 years old. You're now 36 and a half. I love it. <laughs> so somewhere in March. <laughs> what, 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 what is your game plan? Because you are on a, a trajectory here uh, that could lead to a very successful exit in a few years. Is, is yeah. that what you is that, you want to you want to do these all these financial and technical things until you're my age, or do you want the company to succeed, sell it off, and then go back to the art side of Maria, which is making films. It's, it's hard to see myself not doing what I'm doing right now, I have to say. Um, it would be a huge leap uh, in, in completely letting go of a baby that I have, I have, uh, yeah, conceived somewhere in 2014, at the end of 2014. Uh, so we started with crew funded first and, and then we, we got to film chain. Um, so I've been doing this for six years now. Um, I, I definitely see in that, for example, now we got investment from Hearst. Hearst Media is a huge company that owns 370 other companies and we're part of their lab now and they're our investors. It's like, yay, you know, it's, that only happened like a couple of days ago to get the final green light. Uh, yes, thank you so much. Um, however, that is, we recognize that this is game changing and uh, could accelerate new markets and new partnerships and unlock new conversations um, in the very near future. So definitely this is a type of trajectory where we would be much more active in uh, places like LA and in new markets. Um, so not only right now we're in Europe, um, Israel, Canada and Australia, we would definitely see ourselves as fairly established in the US as well, and uh, start even considering the Asian markets. Um, but then what it would mean for the board and how the executive level would look like, I I don't know. I, I, I definitely feel like Irina and I, the two co-founders, will, will continue to be involved with the business in whichever shape and form. Um, if we will still remain the CEOs in the next three and a half years, um, I guess we have the humbleness or the, I like to think, um, to admit when things will be a bit over our heads. Um, if, if there's too many like operations and the expansion requires a different type of expertise, uh, we will definitely take that advice. But if we feel like we still can drive this business, make it even more successful, um, we will we will still be the, the co-CEOs like, like we are now. Um, in terms of my involvement with artistic projects, it feels really good where, where we are right now because I get to speak to all of these producers. I somehow, I'm still very involved, even not creatively, but like we sit down and we talk about distribution strategies. We talk about 
uh, where to sell next. We watch the films that they're sending us. We, we know the films of our clients. So it's still incredibly rewarding to be involved with these amazing projects. Well, like we, we, we're very passionate about the projects that we're taking. Um, I guess the difference is we're doing it at, a, at, a, at another scale. So right now we've done throughout an entire year, year and a half, we've done 35 films. Yeah, which is that's amazing. How, how many people work for you? Growing, it's growing. We're recruiting. Do you know anyone? <laughs> um, yes, actually me. <laughs> I'll, I'll send you my CV. So do you prefer the full stack developer role or do you prefer the business? I'm, I'm, I'm more front end actually. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So yeah, we're, we're growing. We're about 10. Um, we do have um, uh, like contractors, subcontractors and freelancers as well. Um, we are opening a second office in Hamburg, which is our second kind of territory, uh, Germany. Uh, um, an awesome country that's right from the beginning, like really adopted us very quickly. They didn't care if we're not born or we don't even live there. They were like, wow, innovation, how cool. Let's let's make partnerships, let's do stuff together. So we really, really liked, um, we really liked Germany and that's, that's gonna be our second office in the very, yeah, and over the next few months. And what you've been, I know that you have a very good uh relationship with Israel and the Israeli people. Yes, yeah. Where, how, where did that, where did, that's how we met. Where did that come from? Well, it started, <laughs> it started when I was very young because my godfather is, um, is uh, yeah, is in Romania. Uh, and then uh, basically he's Jewish and I grew up a lot with him around as like a, a second father figure. And then I worked for three years in a Jewish theater in the one in Bucharest. Um, and yeah, I think like there were a lot of kind of connecting dots in my life, uh, ever since really, uh, my, my, my teacher was Maya Morgenstern, one of kind of the most emblematic, um, uh, Romanian actresses, uh, with, with her father, the, a, a rabbi. Um, and then of, of course I became part of the Kinner family, which was absolutely amazing. It was How did you find out about Yossi Vardy and Kinnernet? So it's, it's through Stan Salovir. Uh, he is also involved in film and tech and he was already a, um, a, a repeated offender <laughs> um, when it comes to Kinernet and DLD. And, and he introduced me to Kinner Nord and I was like really kind of uh, mind blown. And I was like, oh my God, anything like that exists. Um, and- You should say not, not everybody in the audience knows what Kinernet is. It's a series of unconferences organized by uh, Dr. Yossi Vardi over the past 15 years, uh, where he um, invites very, very um, amazing people who are very lucky to get together at these events. Um, and the, the last time we actually saw each other was the end of February at uh, Kiner Nord in Finland, just before the shit hit the fan. Exactly. And it does become like a, a, a family. So without everything, I, I feel it's so natural. So it, it, you go there in order to, to be mind blown with incredible information. Um, and you attend these sessions that are, can, can be like really, really eye opening. But at the same time, you become part of something much bigger than this, right? So you're learning social interactions, you are discovering people realigned on values and how they want to change the world for the better. And then I attended DLD in Tel Aviv. And uh, I took that opportunity last year when I was in DLD to reach out to Israeli Film Fund and to a few other funds in, in Israel who were so amazing. Like straight away they said, yeah, sure. How, for how many days you're here, let's meet. And we scheduled the meeting straight away. And uh, that just led to more collaborations. We, we talked to, um, uh, yeah, to more, more with Cinefil, with Keshet, with um, Israeli Film Fund. So all of a sudden, like I started mapping out really quickly the ecosystem. Um, uh, there's a Jerusalem film, film lab, which was a fantastic film lab. Like it's, Oh, it's amazing uh, the, 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 how they, they were cherry picking like the best films. They, they were taking those films, developing them. And then the next year they were winning all the awards around the world. Like 
I was asking them, how do you select them from, from a script level? Are you going to do TV also? Israel is becoming so big in TV and licensing. Yes. This yes, should be absolutely. right up your alley. Yes, absolutely. So we're already involved with TV series as well. Um, I, I guess um, I, I knew better about the film, the independent film um, realm, so the two-hour piece. But um, in the meantime, we got more and more uh, familiar with processes in TV. And yes, definitely. So, uh, Maria, we're towards the end of our wonderful uh, conversation. And the I big joy... ask you anything. <laughs> no, this, this is a program where I interview amazing people. Thank you so much, Mel. <laughs> this is like my big joy is to... I have a sign that says, shut up and listen. Oh, you know, man. As, as a university professor, that's very difficult. <laughs> um, or as an ex-university professor. Um, so uh, before we go, okay, first of all, a, a couple of compliments. Um, in, in Yiddish, we, we use the term mensch to describe a, a, a person who is a wonderful, kind, generous. Uh, it actually means a, a man. Uh, so you are a woman mensch. That's the first thing. The second thing is that, um, you know, you, you, you're willing to help anybody and you're generous, but you're also very driven to succeed. Um, is, is there somebody in, in, in your family, something in your past, uh, somebody that you have to prove something to that I, Maria Tangela, mm -hmm. okay, who thought that I was just a nobody and I'm going to show you, I'm going to become an international superstar. Who is that person in your life? Obviously, <laughs> um, uh, yes, that person exists. It's it's it's, it's, more, it's called my father. <laughs> 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 he knows. <laughs> no, he knows. He knows. I even made a short film about uh, our relationship. It was really? a great exercise. Um, yeah, like the uh, language. Uh, synopsis, please. The difficult relationship between a son and uh, his father. <laughs> Yeah, that was uh, that was many years ago. Although I think our relationship definitely improved, um, and at the same time, I, I kind of um, definitely acknowledged his amazing input in my life and and the way he built my resilience. Uh, not only kind of pushed me to do great things or to um, uh, to aspire towards great things, uh, but but built my resilience as well. So I am I am grateful for becoming who I am today. For for making life difficult for you. Yeah, exactly. That, that's our job as parents, I think. Uh, he succeeded. <laughs> and and um, and you're very young, but I'm, you know, as a, as a, uh, a father and grandfather, you know, if, if I were your dad, okay, I would also ask the question, at some stage, are you going to have a family? You would make the, the most terrific mom in the world, I think. Thank you. I, um, I would agree with that. I was a teacher for one year at the kindergarten, and I absolutely loved it so now i am nannying all my friends kids i'm an official nanny for all of my friends especially who are right now going a bit crazy during the lockdown and no school and no kindergarten um and i, I absolutely love kids uh, luckily i have two nephews so my sister took uh, really took care of that side keeping my my parents very busy with two nephews, uh, so I get a, a bit less pressure these days. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, cert uh, certainly considering if you know anyone, you know there's no no uh, no diamond on this finger. So well, you know, thousands of people are going to see this, and um, I think that what you should do is make me a, a very quick wish list. Who are you looking for? Oh my God. <laughs> This has never been done on You've Got Mel. I know, right? <laughs> well, the first woman needs to get the question. Um, I guess uh, it's definitely someone... someone. Hey, you, you, you brought it up, not me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, someone who, who aligns in values. Uh, that's something that, that, that we kind of uh, agreed. I was talking to my mom about it, and she was saying the same. She was saying, like, uh, make sure that you, you agree on the, the really important principles and um, is someone that uh, when you're 60 you still like really enjoy spending time with and having 
stimulating conversations. Um, so, so that that has been a bit more of my moral compass, so to say, when when choosing. Um, and I, I think that's important moving forward. It, it's hard to know, though. But I, I can tell you, as somebody who's yeah, over sixty, me. exactly <laughs> over sixty, uh, and I'm spending a lot of time. I think during these past few months, I spent more time with my wife than I have in in a few decades. Uh, we're getting along very well. Amazing. Um, and I would prefer to be here than anywhere else, actually, which is very strange. Amazing. Um, so yes, yeah, so I, I do. Uh, I do wish that for you. Thank and you so not, much. Not, not having to be home. And, 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 and finally, you know, we don't talk about the virus on my show, but you really had a, a couple of very difficult months here. Yeah, and I survived it. <laughs> Boy, did you ever. So, um, so now do you want me to answer your question? So Mel, when you, <laughs> when you uh, composed and, um, and released into the world that uh, joyful, fascinating you've got mail song when was that and and how did it come about okay thank you that's a very good question um i i used to have a radio show at idc at a college in herzliya it called you've got mail now the funny thing is you know that um people who are over 30 they get it you know you've got mail the uh, millennials don't understand why it's funny um maybe you don't um there used to be this saying, you've got mail. Ah, amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. The young people have no idea. So um, I wrote the jingle about nine years ago. And I had a radio show and I interviewed. It was like it was like radio, you know, 52 minutes with songs in the middle and um, only audio. It's, you can still find it on the Internet. And uh, then a few weeks ago, I had this idea. Why well, don't I, you know, if I can find the jingle, I can have my Zoom cast with the jingle. So uh, I found a jingle um, and uh, actually Mickey Pellet, my uh, assistant uh, had, had found it. And, um, and you are number 10, not number 10 Downing Street. Um, <laughs> even though I'm sure you do a much uh, better job than what's his name, but we don't talk about politics on the show. Nope. Um, so, so that explains it's, it's, it's a jingle from the radio show from nine years ago. Amazing, amazing. Well, no, well, I look forward to many more new additions um, and to more women on uh, num as number 12 and 13 and 14. Well, listen, why don't you send me a few uh, amazing uh, names and I will, follow, I will follow up. And if you send me your mailing address, not right now, later, I will send you a few children's books to read to your nephews. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mel. Maria, listen, uh, it's always a joy to see you. Um, many, many times. Until the next time we can meet at some kinernet or other, uh, stay safe, bless you, and continue to make the world a better place. Exactly the same to you. Big hug. Thank you, Mel. Bye, dear. Bye.